Going through the door here is the Ed Westcott Gallery. And this is the gallery that they designated for you because of all your prints and stuff. And it's a hallway going to the cafeteria. You look good? This is kind of nice. Yeah. <laughs> Ed was the type of person that I would call him a photographer. So what did he do as a hobby? Photography. What did he do on the job? Photography. What did he love doing? Photography. Ed's photographs aid immensely in communicating what was actually here, what actually happened. Well, his name is James Edward Westcott, Sr. He was born in Chattanooga, Tennessee, January the 20th, 1922, and his parents was Jamie Westcott and Lucille Green Westcott. Ed had a younger brother named Hugh Westcott. They called him Buddy. The family lived a short time in Chattanooga and then moved to Nashville. And at the age of eight, Ed uh, met a boy across the street that had a photographic lab, I guess, in the closet of his house. And Ed went over and watched him develop film. And Ed went back home and told his mother he wanted to develop film in the house. And she said, okay. And he used some of her dishes as uh, developing trays and went in the closet, used a paper bag over the light for the uh, lighting in the closet and then developed some film that his mother had taken. Well, that was what really got Ed started in photography. He knew what he wanted to do. Photography grabbed him at an early age. And from there, he got a job with the Corps of Engineers. Ed got a job with the Corps of Engineers out of Nashville. He photographed uh, the Cordell Hull Dam site and other dams built by the Corps of Engineers throughout Tennessee. Ed got married to Esther Siegenthaler in 1941, and he had a son, Jimmy. When he had the opportunity to either go to Alaska or come to Oak Ridge, he chose Oak Ridge. Ed was the 29th employee hired by the Corps of Engineers for the Manhattan Project, and his job assignment was to photograph the building of the three nuclear plants in the daily life of the city. Just tremendous amount of film footage and still photographs. documented the science that was being created. But also, he documented the livelihood of the people, the excitement going on in this new pioneering town. from the swimming pool activities, movie theaters, uh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, horseback riding, archery, horseshoes, you name it. He made it come alive in his photographs, but he also got the science. He documented the calutrons, he documented the graphite reactor and the K25 gaseous diffusion plant. All of those things, we know what they look like now, although some of them are gone, but we know what they look like because of Ed's photography. In 1966, Ed had an opportunity to take a job for AEC as head of audio video. When he'd go to the White House, he could tell the president where to sit, how to sit, and what to do. 
Not many people could do that. And when he retired, he came back to Oak Ridge and uh, picked up where he left off, really, because he started working in photography as a contractor. We had to get some help in the darkroom because we were so busy, we were putting out the photos like crazy, and that was before digital days. So they hired this gentleman that was uh, retired and thought, well, he knows a little bit about photography, and we didn't know who he was. And, and uh, he did some of my photographs, printed them, had them laying on my desk, and they're better than what I could have printed. I said, who is this guy? So I had to find out who he was, and after I found out Ed was the Manhattan Project guy for AEC and everything, and he was the man, uh, I told my boss, I said, get him a camera. And so he got a camera and started helping shoot for us more than just darkroom work. When you see Ed's photographs, you see that they tell a story. In many cases, there are people doing things, participating in some activity. He could put them at ease and have them doing what they did naturally. There's no way you can just walk in with a view camera and take a candid shot but his photographs look natural, look great. They don't have that posed look. Ed photographed from water towers, from hanging from cranes, helicopters. Ed made a windscreen, or windshield, I guess you call it, that would go around his 4 x 5 speed graphic camera to keep the wind from moving the bellus around. And he had his tripod secured in the helicopter, which was a two-seater bubble front helicopter. And he also used a larger helicopter that had a door on the side that the military used at times. And that's what he made his aerials of Oak Ridge with. Coming back to Oak Ridge, he became a celebrity in the area. I noticed that his pictures are all over town in Oak Ridge. If it wasn't for Ed's photographs, we wouldn't have known what Oak Ridge was all about, really. So the photographs you see around Oak Ridge now in various businesses is a tribute to him, and it's also telling and showing the history of Oak Ridge. Well, later on, Ed decided he wanted to write a book about Oak Ridge, and he started that book, and he had a stroke. Well, the stroke uh, impaired Ed to speak. Uh, his mind's good, and he could remember a lot. The family got together and put the book together, finished the book with his approval. During that time, we all learned a lot about Oak Ridge history and, and what each one of these pictures were. Uh, it's called Oak Ridge. It shows the building of the three nuclear plants and the daily life throughout the city. Uh, the cover is one of Ed's famous pictures that he enjoys. Ed was telling me about this. He said, Everybody in Oak Ridge, they heard it on the radio that the war was over. Nobody believed it. It's sort of like the internet. Nobody believes the internet. Here on the top, these are a lot of folks that had gathered on the grass waiting some kind of word about the war. So they waited till the newspaper came out. And when the newspaper came out, he took his truck, went down to Jackson Square, and got in the back of it with his tripod and looked at all the people there, and they all started holding up the newspapers and they realized the war really was over because the newspaper said so. And he said he actually took this with his own camera and own film, so he wasn't even on duty when he took these pictures. These young ladies was hired in as cubicle operators, later became known as Calutron girls. The lady on the front stool right here is Gladys Owens. The gentleman standing in the middle of the floor back there is her supervisor, Connie Bolin. 
And their job was to sit in front of those cubicles and look at the dials and make sure they kept them on a certain number. And um, they didn't know what they were doing. One in particular is this one. I call it the Mona Lisa of uh, Oak Ridge because Ed captured this moment. It just shows a worker having his lunch. This was not what the government paid him to do. This was Ed being Ed and capturing way beyond what he was asked to do. And this is a treasured picture now. This is when Senator Kennedy and his wife came to Oak Ridge. And it was February the 24th, 1950, when this photograph was taken. Well, I was fortunate to marry his daughter, Emily, um, back in 1965, but I knew Ed before that, uh, for three or four years, you know. The thing about Ed, he never met a stranger. He was always outgoing, always friendly. Ed is very easy to talk to. He loves to have conversation about photography, but he's interested in many other things. He treated me, and Esther did too, as one of the kids. And that's been a warm spot for me for many years because my mother died at an early age and my father died later on. But um, Ed uh, was always very generous. He's always been a very generous man uh, with not only me, the rest of the people that he runs into as well. Ed was the most easygoing guy I've ever seen. I couldn't believe he was in charge of the whole AEC thing because he liked to pull practical jokes. Ed had a good sense of humor too. I mean, as far as doing uh, jokes and things of that nature, he, he liked that. He told me that there's this graveyard out on 58, Highway 58, that hangs over the edge of 58. And uh, it had rained a lot and he started thinking, wouldn't it be funny if I take two boards and put a pair of pants on them and a uh, some boots on it and have it hanging off the edge. And he did that and people were calling the offices going, there are bodies, they're coming out of the grave. It's, it's raining so hard. See, he did a lot of things like that. He made a film one time, I just happen to remember, about the, his kids going in a box and coming out the other side. It's like kids coming out of a box and they go around the box and come back out again just continuously. And he would do silly stuff like that during his uh, raising of the kids and, and, and photography work with them. You can read about Oak Ridge history, but words can only take you so far. Photographs gives you an image that you can use to imagine what was going on. Photographs bring the history to life. Obviously, it's a real privilege for me as mayor representing the city to participate in the opening of atomic integration. This exhibit chronicles the patriotism, the work, the skill, the dignity, and the life experiences of African Americans during the Manhattan Project. Of course, this photographic history was one of the works of the legendary Ed Westcott. His genius uh, has been well chronicled itself. Well, and of course, I see Ed. And I Ed's still a big part of Oak Ridge. You can see him at various events around town. His mind is still as sharp as a tack. Ed is able to put people at ease readily. He was always outgoing, always friendly. You didn't feel like you were in the presence of a big ego or anything like that. He was Ed. We should remember the words of President Kennedy who said, we celebrate the past to awaken the future. A nation reveals itself not only by the people it produces, but also the people it honors and the people it remembers.